We are back on the boat. We had a lot of fun messing about, not doing much work, but we're back and it's time to start working on the head again. If you guys remember, original design had sort of a folding out sink and we were gonna use an Ikea bowl. And then the other side was gonna have like a fold down countertop and it was kind of a logistical nightmare. <laughs> I was having trouble trying to figure out how to get it all to work and uh, I was playing around in SketchUp and Kika came over and said what happens if you just uh, switch it around like reverse it um, so I spent a little more time designing and found a new sink that's gonna work a lot better and everything's gonna be a lot more simple we're not gonna have a fold-out countertop anymore that was actually the issue it wasn't really the fold-out sink it was trying to take a cabinet door and turn it into a countertop without having a bump or a gap in that hinge um, which was kind of tricky, but by flipping everything around, we no longer need to have a fold-out countertop. So I'm pretty excited to start cutting some wood and gluing some stuff together. All right, so I glassed the other side of this bulkhead back when I redid the uh, the nook area but now it's time to do this side of it and fill in the gap with epoxy so that it has like a nice smooth connection to the hull before I put fiberglass on it. It's really nice working with air conditioning. I bet. <laughs> it means that we have like not an unlimited amount of time to do the work but significantly extended amount of time to get this work done because the epoxy is not kicking like immediately. See how this looks. Oh yeah. Looks like it worked out pretty well. Although this was a very, very easy fiberglassing job. Pretty straightforward. Uh, I also added like a reinforced patch. I added about eight more layers of fiberglass here. So where our through hole is gonna go, it's gonna be nice and flat and nice and reinforced. That looks pretty good too. So the next big piece of what I've got to cut is going to be um, sort of like a bulkhead that goes in here that'll separate the wet locker from the sink and the cabinetry above it. Uh, it's kind of a tricky thing to cut because of this compound curve of the hull. So I'll walk you through the steps that I'm going to take and hopefully it makes sense to mark and measure out uh, that rough curve so that when I cut it onto a template it should fit the first time. So we've got this piece of wood down here and the hull kind of curves up behind it something like this. There's gonna be another piece of wood up here. So the idea is gonna to be to draw, or to have a straight line that goes up like this, and then every six inches or so, measure back with a square and get that measurement. And that should give us a pretty good shape for the back of the hull. All right, I think everything's all set up. The trick is to get this piece of wood uh, as straight up and down as possible. And on a boat, that's kind of tricky. But the inside of the head here is relatively square. I've been measuring everything off of this bulkhead um, that, because that's the thing that's fiberglassed into our boat. So uh, this piece of wood is now square to this bulkhead and the door. So it should give a pretty accurate up and down so that everything, now all the measurements that I take off of here with the tape measure should be relatively accurate. The trick is not to be too exact, too precise on the measurements. Um, 
It's good to get it close, but since it's going to be fiberglassed in anyway, being off by a quarter of an inch isn't really going to make a difference. Uh, and there's there's also some inconsistencies in the hull shape. So it's okay to like kind of measure it as exact as you can and then maybe pull it back by a quarter of an inch or an eighth of an inch. Um, and I'm also going to cut a template out of some really thin like Luon first to make sure that it, uh, it fits. It's going to be a lot easier to work with that. And then once that fits, then we'll cut the bulkhead out of plywood. Let's uh, let's go to the shop. So this stuff that I'm using is sort of a template for the bulkhead. It's called Triply or Luon. It's super duper cheap. It's kind of just like a step up above cardboard uh, because it's a little bit more rigid than cardboard, but it's really light, really easy to work with. Uh, and it should give me a pretty good idea for the overall shape of the bulkhead when it's done. You ready to go test to see if it fits? All right, moment of truth. This never goes smoothly the first time, but. It fits. Pretty freaking good. Yeah, come take a look. I'd say it fits pretty well. Not bad for a first try. Uh, I might need to shave a little bit more off the front, but I need to measure that and figure it out. But uh, yeah, pretty good for uh, pretty good for the first draft. All right, now it's time to make the actual bulkhead out of three quarter inch ply. Uh, I'm just using the template, well, <laughs> as a template. All right, this uh, three quarter inch piece of plywood ought to do. Um, I've been told that it has, it's been bonded with waterproof glue, or water resistant glue anyway. So it's as marine grade as it's gonna get. Since we're fiberglassing it to the hull, that's kind of important. That ought to do it. Making a rocking horse. Let's go see if it fits. Well, now that that's in there and it fits, uh, I think I'm done for the day. Tomorrow I'll, um, I'll finish framing this out a little bit and then probably fiberglass this in, reinforce the knee a little bit and fiberglass the bottom of that bulkhead in. But it's getting pretty late, so I think it's time to go to bed. Well, I'll eat dinner first and go to bed. See you tomorrow. We are back at the shop and it's past five o'clock, which means everybody already left and went home, which means it's time for us to start working. It's great because we can have the whole shop for ourselves and we're not in people's way and it's quieter. And today is the first round of staining the pieces of wood. Yeah, this is all sort of like the structural bits that hold everything else together. So they have to be installed first before we can finish measuring and cutting and installing everything else.
it's finally time to actually install the first few pieces of wood. The sort of skeleton, the backbone of all the rest of the carpentry. Uh, I'm pretty excited. Hopefully it fits. part about that new toilet we've got is that it came with a mounting template so it's going to make installing it a lot easier. You just have to drill a couple of holes for the brackets and then drill a hole where the waste pipe goes through, where the electrical goes through, and where the water goes through. These are just kind of like pilot holes to mark the centers. That's it. Maybe it's time for new batteries. <laughs> no, those things, those things destroy your, your your drill batteries. Like they require so much power. It's time to charge the drill batteries. Oh, there it is. So close. We just got our sink. Uh, I really hope it fits. We uh, we built the whole cabinet there in the head based off of some dimensions we got online. So I hope now that it's here, it's actually gonna fit in the box that we made. I'm excited though. It's a really cool sink. Oh. 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 Oh, what's that? It comes in a bag. Look at that. <laughs> it's going to be like the nicest thing on our whole boat. I hope it fits. So I know we planned on using that uh, that porcelain bowl we found in Ikea, um, but that was one of the issues we were having with the old design was it was going to stick up too high. It wasn't going to allow it to uh, open and close to fold out. So when we found this bad boy on Amazon, uh, it looked like it was going to be pretty much the perfect solution. Uh, we'll link. We'll link this sink in the description below, though, in case you guys want one. What's this fancy bag of goodies? Comes in, comes in bags. What sink comes in a bag? Comes with a cleaning cloth. It's uh, it's meant to be like a little bar top sink, but it's gonna fit in our head perfectly. That's the giant drain. What? <laughs> That's pretty cool. So I built this sink. Uh, box before the sink actually arrived, uh, hoping it was going to fit. I had dimensions, but you know, everything's always a little bit off. I had to shave about a quarter of an inch off each side, and now I'm going to have to cut about a half inch off the lip of the sink. But since it's an undermount, it's not really going to matter. Uh, so not bad for, uh, for not having it before we built the thing. Oh, it's so freaking pretty. Well, I know it doesn't look like much, uh, but these are basically all the removable pieces left aside from the doors. Um, some of which I need to put another coat of stain on, some of which I'm going to put the first coat of stain on. But yeah, pretty much all the carpentry is done, so it's all coming together. Now it's just the uh, the cosmetic and finishing. Stain, a couple coats of epoxy, and then a couple coats of uh, varnish. I'll do it. 
Looks like a mess of Tetris pieces right now, but they all go in the right place. been a few hours. It's dark outside. This is the little uh, test piece that I did before I left with the epoxy. Uh, it looks really good actually. Uh, you can't see any of the sanding marks. Um, it's, not, it's not super smooth but that's why you sand it and I'll probably do two coats. Uh, but tonight I'm just going to be putting a ceiling layer of epoxy on the back, the underside of all these pieces. Uh, and since it's never going to see the sun or really that much water exposure or anything else, I'm probably not going to put uh, a finished coat of varnish on it so it's just going to be a bare coat of epoxy it's going to be on the bottom and then all the sides that we're actually going to see will get two coats of epoxy and a coat of varnish over top so yeah it's time uh time to mix up some epoxy and gob it on there It's actually nice, it has this really nice golden color to it, which actually translates a little bit into the finish as well. All right, if you're bored of a time lapse of me uh, mixing epoxy, I'm just gonna keep mixing it for a few more minutes and then maybe rather than speeding up this whole process in the video, I'll just do a couple of nice buttery close-ups. guys that's it for this week there's a lot more where that came from so come back next week and uh, to see how this whole thing works out but uh, I'm going to bed Good night cheers oh <laughs> hi <That's... laughs> don't make me laugh I need to pee oh